Welcome to this week's edition of Kazu Big Boy Trev and today we have an amazing show starting with the Toyota Hilux which we drove all over town and of course the Volkswagen Touareg you do not want to miss that First things first, let's check out the news Welcome to Kazi Big Boy Trev News and today we are doing a county edition we are in Nyeri at the Toyota Nyeri showroom. Now remember this was a branch before and Toyota has taken it up, spruced it up. Now it's a brand new facility with all the 3S services, sales, part and service. So if you're around the Nyeri area including Mwea, uh, Nanyuki, I mean the whole central area and its environs, please visit, come check out the full range of cars that Toyota has in store and Mr. Murigui will tell us what this facility is all about. This facility now that it's a full service branch is going to be giving you the three S's that sales, service and spare parts. Again guys remember, I want to do this again. Please visit uh, the new Hilux is here in town. Please come and visit and you get all the details courtesy of Toyota. You have specialized uh, equipment for handling your service. If you're doing a Hilux in this area, please visit and they'll give you advice on how to maintain your car. Moving on now to the second part. Ford have introduced the Focus ST now. The Focus ST is a hot hatch. It's been in the battle with uh, the Volkswagen GTI and the Peugeot GTI for years and now they've introduced a new engine, a 2.3 litre engine producing 206 kilowatts and 430 newton meters of torque. Now, acceleration times 0 to 106.1 seconds before hitting a top speed of 155 or 250 kilometers an hour. Mr. Mirigi, would you pick the Focus of the GTI? Well, I mean, you, you first have to think about the fact that it's a Focus ST, not the Focus RS. Yes. So there's still a higher spec level that's available. Yes. It's a very tricky thing between the, the GTI and, uh, and um, the Focus ST, especially considering there's a very wide range of, of cars in that, in that segment. Yes. Uh, the hot hatch segment has gotten extremely interesting. We've all seen what Hyundai has done with the i30N. In fact, I think they hired a BMW engineer just the other day. Yes. So you're sure that that is a fantastic car to drive. Wow, guys, remember this hot hatch segment is growing and it's very competitive. We don't know if the local dealer, CMC, will bring a focus, but we urge them, please bring the ST. We want to show guys how powerful, how fun it is to drive. Now, moving on to the last part, Mazda. The new Mazda 3 is out. Now, Mazda is trying to take the cars a notch higher into the premium segment. You have plenty of good looks, finishing, using uh, Alcantara leather, you know, digital aids for displaying, you know, lane keep assist, etc. Mr. Mirigi, this section is dominated by Toyota Corolla. What do you think? Will Mazda introduce a new thing into the market? I think generally, if you think about saloons in general, they are right now experiencing a bit of a decline as people now shift to compact SUVs. So it means now for the guys who are still in the business of making saloons, they have to make sure they bring their air game. Mazda has always been one of those uh, manufacturers that, that does a really good job. They are very admirated. They bring a uh, European sense of style and finesse yes. in, into each of their vehicles. So I'm very excited about the Mazda 3 that's coming in. The, exist, the existing Mazda 3 is really dope. Um, so it's just seeing what, what they're going to do to up the game. Um, just to make sure that they're keeping people on saloons and not switching to compact SUVs. Remember Mazda's come up with a new design language called the Kodo design, the fluid design. So you can see the curves on the bonnet, on the side, so it looks a little bit uh, fresh. It's a fresh design and targeted at the younger generation. The rivals of this car will include the Impreza by Subaru, of course the Toyota Corolla, and the Nissan Almera, which is, you know, it's okay, it's an alright car, it's been there for a while. I think there's a replacement coming soon, so keep it cuts with Big Boy Trev for all the latest news and reviews around the world. Step inside this luxurious cabin of the Volkswagen Touareg and I can tell you it's plenty of class and finish. Volkswagen are known to have clean lines, not too cluttered, not too many buttons. And you can tell from this design here on the dashboard, it looks very sleek, very, very, very premium. Over here, we do have a centerpiece console that actually houses the uh, multimedia information interface. Now, too much of a mouth thing, but basically it's a screen where 
it has as a climate control the radio media you can connect your phone using bluetooth and of course you have car setup so you can check out the different uh, things in the vehicle so like stability control you can control park sensors and etc the audio system kicks some crazy sound i can tell you it's part by a Bose system that enhances the sound quality i can tell you there you go <laughs> guys i'm telling you getting being a passenger in this vehicle is so much fun if you love music then this audio system from Bose will help you relax your mind enjoy the the, the trebles and the basses within the car that's it this vehicle sits five people comfortably as you can see on the front you do have sculpted seats with side bolts that allows you to feel very comfortable when driving fast or driving slow and even you do have some you know hamstring bolsters that uh, doesn't make you feel tired when you're driving long long distance that said at the back you do have plenty of space even for a tall and big guy like myself i do find the back very very comfortable and as we move out to the back we're able to see that this particular car is able to carry so much luggage that you can't even believe let's step at the back and see guys like i mentioned earlier the boot space in this tourer is massive you can fit two large suitcases and even pile another two on top so that means you can carry stuff you know your groceries your beddings it could be anything that is tall enough in fact you can actually make sure that you lie down the rear seat by just touching these two buttons and immediately you have space to extend the surface area of the boot just to make sure that you carry a lot of stuff now that said you do also have a space saver over here complete with the tire pressure uh, pump during emergencies as well because i think it's a run flat and of course you do have uh, your towing hook and your other accessories that you might need also you do have an automatic towing retractor as well and a 12 volt socket if you want to charge your refrigerator or inverter to power up your stuff that's it guys it's time to take this beast on the road are you ready i'm ready to sample the three liter v6 tdi let's go Welcome back to Kazi Big Boy Drive. Today I'm in Meru, Toyota Mutindwa, and I'm with a loyal Hilux fan. Now I'm with Mr. Moredi, who is a good friend of mine, and I just met him at the showroom, Karibu Sana. Thank He's a so loyal much. Toyota fan. Tell us your love affair. When did it start with Toyota? My love affair with the Toyota Hilux started in the way 2012. I had a, a different pickup, which did not give me a good performance in comparison to the Hilux. Since 2012, I've had that pickup for the last five years. By April of this year, it will have clocked uh, six years. I've not had any issues with this pickup so far. It's been a, it has served me well. Yes. I've not had any issues with the maintenance. The small, small issues that we've always had, we've always ha had them fixed here at Mutindo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cannot compare this pickup with the pickup that I initially had. It's given me a fantastic service. Wow. Yeah. Now tell me. What are the key selling points of this particular branch, Toyota Mutindo? Do you love it because of convenience? Do they take care of your car effectively and give you advice on how to maintain it? Yes, they do. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, what are your service intervals so far in as far as that pickup is concerned, the one that you currently have? We've been doing a service after every 5,000 kilometers. Uh -huh. Basically, I've not had any problem with that pickup. I'm okay. very happy about it. Mm -hmm. I've done a test drive on the new pickup, mm -hmm. which I found, of course, is, is a better performer than the old pickup. And I'm making arrangements to buy a new pickup. Interesting, guys. You see, if you're a loyalist fan, you'd always want the newer model. Now, speaking of the newer model, what are the key points that you've loved about this new Hilux? Power. Uh huh. Uh, comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, efficiency. Uh, bigger carrying capacity. Ah. And a better clearance, unlike the other one. Guys, listen. If you are in Toyota, Please visit this area, Toyota Mutindo in Meru. They'll give you advice on how to take care of your Toyota pickup and much more.
Welcome to Cars with Big Boy Trev Maintenance Section. And today I'm at this brand new state of the art Toyota Nyeri service center. I've just brought in my car. We're doing some filming around Nyeri just for some servicing tips. And today we're gonna learn much more about minor and major service. So follow me guys. I am with this good gentleman who works here. Now tell me, this particular engine is a 2KD engine. What is the service inter interval required for this particular car? Okay, for minor services we do it at a, after every 5,000 kilometers. Okay. Yeah. Now, what parts do you replace and okay. check? Okay. We usually replace the oil filter and the engine oil. Uh -huh. But for if air cleaner, we just check it and then we check the brake fluid level, the coolant level, the power steering fluid level uh -huh. and the condition of the fuel filter. Now, assuming that I film all day around Kenya, I need this car serviced for major service. What do you check? Okay, for major service, okay, we, we also change the engine oil and oil filter, mm -hmm. but for the air cleaner, we replace with another one. Okay. And also we change the transmission oils. Okay. That includes gearbox oil, uh -huh. front differential oil, transfer gearbox oil, and rear diff oil. Now, at what interval should we check and change the timing belt for this? this okay. belt? The timing belt for this kind of engine is usually changed at, uh, after every 150,000 kilometers. Okay. Yeah. So, in your final thoughts, what do you think about the 2KD? Is it a powerful engine? Yeah, the 2KD is a, a very powerful engine. Ah, nice. Yeah. Guys, you've had it. So, if you have a Toyota Hilux or Prado or Fortuna with the 2KD engine, please don't hesitate to visit this particular brand new showroom. They'll give you expert opinion on how to maintain and take care of your car so that you have peace of mind if you're around this particular area. See you next week. Today is a beautiful day out here in Limuru and I'm sampling the Volkswagen Touareg. Now this particular vehicle is a legend especially in the Volkswagen family. It's steadily grown to become one of Volkswagen's best-selling SUVs. Reason is because it shares a platform with the Porsche Cayenne, the Bentley Bentayga, and now the Lamborghini Urus. But anyway, that said, the platform is quite capable. The reason why people love this car is because it, it's got some decent on-road manners, and of course, it does have some also very good off-roading capabilities. It's not your full strength 4x4, but the 4 motion, with chosen differential works extremely well um, on maram and a bit of you know off-road surfaces that said i'm more interested about the power up front you have a stunning three liter v6 that produces guess what 180 kilowatts and 500 newton meters of torque that are channeled to the four wheels courtesy of a four motion differential literally guys this car is very very balanced step on the gas in an uphill and the turbochargers kick in, delivering raw power up to 3,000 RPM. And you feel that this guy is eager and wants to move. The eight-speed automatic from Isin. It's no longer a DSG gearbox. It's from Isin. It's a Japanese company. Allows you to explore the full potential of this particular car while returning a fuel economy figure of about 13 kilometers per hundred kilometers. That is just an average. You need to sample it. it depends on the vehicle, the condition, etc. I love this particular car. It's poised, it's balanced. The front suspension is very complex, double wishbones. At the back as well, double wishbones with trailing arm. It allows this car to be planted, especially on sharp curves and crests. And of course, the steering is weighted properly. It's not too soft, it's not too hard. And when you get brisk or try to push the vehicle, it firms up giving you assurance that you know where the nose is pointed at any given time. That said, I'm going to enjoy much more. Floor it and just feel the power kicking in it's amazing how this vehicle is it's fast it's powerful it's comfortable question is would you pick this over the cayenne or the bmw x5 we're gonna find out as we do our value for money preposition so guys you've driven the touareg all over kiambu and i can tell you even the mafia would love it it's spacious it's comfortable it's premium question is would you pick it over the rivals now, prices start at about 9 million Kenya shillings and comes with a two-year unlimited warranty, guys. Unlimited warranty. If you don't like that, then you can decide to pick the sister, 
the Porsche Cayenne with prices starting at about 10 million Kenya shillings. Again, if you do not even like those two, then you can decide to take the Bavaria BMW X5, the Boss. With prices starting at about 10.5 million Kenya shillings, then you can make your choice. Which of the cars would you pick? Guys, that's it from me. Send us your thoughts and emails. Which one would you pick? The BMW X5, the Touareg, or the Porsche Cayenne? Send us your answers and we'll give a gift after the show. Today we are reviewing something with pedigree, with heritage. What am I talking about? The Toyota Hilux has been part and parcel of the Kenya motoring furniture for close to 50 years. Tough, durable and reliable, this particular car has had the ability to transport goods and services from point A to B without any issues. So this particular version I'm driving is the 2019 version and it is actually powered by the new 2GD family. More efficient, more power, more reliable. It produces 110 kilowatts and 340 newton meters of torque, which actually sounds like this. It actually pulls quite well. And all this parts transmitted to the rear wheels courtesy of a six speed automatic and a six speed manual transmission, depending on the region that you come from. And you are able to explore the full potential of the 2KD engine. It's actually a high compression, high power turbo version that gives you all the pull you need and still remains quite efficient. Toyota claims that this particular car will give you 6.1 liters per 100 kilometers. Now that is interesting. Again, it depends on the load and the surface and the altitude and so much more. So as we take a drive on this particular car, it actually can carry 1.2 tons. At the front, you do have wishbones. It keeps it planted on the road. And at the back, you do have tapered leaf springs that um, increases ride comfort and of course luggage capacity, carrying capacity of the load bay, which is very important. The cabin has been refreshed for 2019, it's more comfortable. Gone are the bench seats that used to dominate <laughs> the pickup scene many years ago. Now you have comfortable bucket seats for long distance driving. You can even tell big boys fitting comfortably. I'm driving and enjoying the highway and there's plenty of space. Headroom, legroom is fantastic. Even the dashboard is well placed so that is distance and space. You have a tablet style audio system here um, that you can also find it on the RAV4 as well. And then you do have AC which is very important. It is extremely hot, 30 degrees out here and without AC it's very difficult to survive. It also has satellite buttons. You can actually change the radio and certain functions like Bluetooth without taking your hands off the steering wheel which is very important in this day and age. Now this vehicle comes with a three year hundred thousand kilometer warranty and Toyota will sell it to you at about 3.2 to 3.3 million Kenya shillings. That said we're gonna do a value for money proposition where we'll see whether the rivals including the Ford Ranger, the Nissan NP300 slash Navara and the Mitsubishi L200 are able to compete effectively with this pickup. So guys we've extensively tested the Toyota single cab Hilux and I can tell you there's a reason why Kenyans love it efficient it's durable and of course has a good value for money preposition now prices start at Kenya shillings 3 million and before you make that decision of buying the pickup of choice who are the key rivals of the highlight mr mirigi in the single cup market it's very wide toyota has been there for the longest time and i love the facelift both inside and out but the main competitor for this has always been the nissan np300 hard body but it also stretches across the isuzu d-max the mitsubishi l200 and the ford ranger not forgetting the Chinese and the Indians, the Tata Zenon. Guys, tell us, would you pick this over the rivals? Send us your thoughts and comments as seen on the social media handles below. It's been an honor. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Cars of Big Boy Trev. Until next week, this is Big Boy Trev signing out. This is Mirigi. Drive safe and be safe. <laughs>